MA1 Part C Source Documents and Coding Chapter 5 A. Source Documents and Coding The topics that this presentation will cover are 1. Coding 2. Documents for Buying and Selling 3. Documents for Recording Materials 4. Documents for Labor Costs 5. Sales Income 1. In order for cost and income to be correctly analyzed, classified and recorded, they need to be first correctly coded to the accounting system. A code is a system of words, letters, figures, or symbols used to represent others. The advantages of using computers are They can record, and retrieve information quickly, and easily. They are automatically, accurate, and have built-in checking facilities. They can file, a large amount of information, in a small space. They are capable of sorting information, in many different ways. Management information is only one part of a business's information system, which is based on transaction or data processing. The information system also needs to support the financial accounts, which will need certain information in order to comply with external regulations. Accounting information needs to be kept for future reference, and some of the information will need to be separately identifiable, in order to meet other regulatory or specific accounting requirements. Some computer systems are able to sort information for both management, and financial accounting purposes, which eliminates the need to enter information in more than once. When data is entered into an accounting system, each item is coded with a specific code. The code can be alphabetical and, or numerical. The length and complexity of the coding system, will depend on the needs and complexity of the business. For financial accounting, normally the codes used are general ledger codes, which relate to the different areas of the statement of financial position, balance sheet, and the income statement. The features of a good coding system are. Each item has a unique code and the codes are uniform in structure and length. Here are some examples of different types of codes. Sequential, progressive. Numbers are given to items in numerical sequence, there is no connection between the code and the item. Block, group. This is an improvement on the simple sequence code, since a digit in the code indicates the classification of the item. Faceted is a refined block code, because each digit in the code gives information about the item. Mnemonic, is a learning technique to aid memory. A mnemonic code, means something. The code could be the abbreviation of the item coded. Hierarchical is a type of faceted code, where each digit represents a classification, and each digit further to the right represents a smaller subset. A coding system doesn't have to be only one of the above codes. It could be a mix of features, according to the items being coded. For example, numeric codes, see the example on page 74 of your interactive text study guide. Alphabetical codes, see the example on page 75 of your interactive text study guide. In order to have correct coding, there needs to be a good understanding of the business and the coding list. This includes the main activities of business, the main sources of income, the main items of expenditure, and the details of the organizational structure. The advantages of a coding system are A code is shorter than a description, which saves time and storage space. A code is more precise than the description, which reduces uncertainty. And coding aids data processing. 2. When goods are needed by the business, a purchase requisition needs to be prepared and then authorized by the manager of the department which needs the goods. Once the purchase requisition has been authorized and signed, it is passed to the purchasing department, who will decide on the appropriate supplier to buy the goods from. The supplier will then send a quotation or an estimate for the goods requested, which may include a trade or cash discount. A trade discount is given for large orders, or to special customers, and will be shown as a deduction on the invoice. A cash discount is usually given for early payment within a certain period of time. It cannot be shown as a deduction until the payment has been made. Once the quote or estimate has been received, 
the purchasing department will then send a purchase order to the supplier requesting the goods. Copies of the purchase order are also sent to the accounts department, so they can use it to check against the invoice when it comes to the store section, so they can update the inventory records and to the goods received section, so they know that the goods are coming. When the goods are sent, they will be accompanied with a delivery note, which is signed and taken back to the supplier, and an advice note, which the customer keeps. Once the goods are received by the customer, a goods received note will be made out and sent to other departments in the business to let them know that the goods have arrived. Copies of the goods received note are sent to the accounts department, so they can use it to check against the invoice when it comes to the store section, so they can update the inventory records to the buyer, to let him know that the goods that were ordered have arrived and to the goods received section, so they can keep a record on file. The supplier will then send a purchase invoice which will tell the customer what to pay, net of the amount of the items and sales tax, VAT. Once the invoice has been received, the accounts department will check the invoice, that the correct amount was charged and that the goods were received, then they will pay the invoice. If the accounts department finds anything wrong with the invoice, the supplier will be notified. If the supplier has made any errors, they will usually issue a credit note to correct the error, either by issuing a credit note for the whole invoice, which in effect cancels it, and then issuing a new invoice, or if the amount is wrong, issuing a credit note to reduce the amount of the invoice to the correct amount. The procedures that have been described are summarized in the table which follows. Step 1. A purchase requisition is made to the purchasing department to tell the buyer what is required. Step 2. The customer, then sends an inquiry to the supplier. Step 3. The supplier then sends a catalog, quotation, or letter of reply. Step 4. The customer, then selects a supplier and sends out a purchase order. Step 5. The supplier will send an advice note of the delivery date. Step 6. The supplier will then deliver the goods. With the goods there will be a delivery note to sign on delivery. Step 7. Once the goods are received, the customer will make out a goods received note and send it to other departments in the business. Step 8. The supplier will send an invoice to tell the customer what to pay. Step 9. The customer will then check the invoice and make payment. In order to code a purchase, you will need to know how suppliers are coded, and which category of cost, the purchase falls under. How the cost is coded will all depend on the business's policy and coding structure. The cost of the purchase to the company will be the cost less the sales tax, VAT. Stop the lecture. Answer the questions on page 81, 82, and 83 of your interactive text study guide. See the next video for the rest of chapter 5.